Okay, hey, welcome back everybody. This is Trey, back from TreyMixes.com. And uh, it's been a while since video, and there's a whole lot of reasons for that. Um, I'm going to be sending an email out to all my email folks to just kind of let them know where I've been. I kind of disappeared for a while, um, thanks to my full-time job and some other stuff. But we're back, settled, and ready to go with some more videos. And today we're going to talk about something that I've been meaning to talk about for a while, and that's with your EQ, is notch frequencies. And notching things out is kind of important, uh, especially for home studio people and people doing this in their bedrooms and in their closets um, who may or may not have perfect on-site recording conditions, which is going to be like 95% of us. So let's talk a bit about this, and I'll show you what I mean with this cool song by my friend Heather Tanner. You can check her out everywhere music is released. Uh, let's have a little quick listen. This is going to be without some of the extra processing just to make it clear what's going on with EQ. Here we go. Like a moth to a flame, they draw me in. Those empty words and those cheap lies. Okay, so that's, that's the section we're going to be looking at and what's going on with the song. And I'm going to turn off the EQ um, on the guitar and this line of vocal. You're going to listen again. Like a moth to a flame. They draw me in Those empty words and those cheap lines And before I knew it My heart is gone again All because of those brown eyed lights Alright, so kind of what's going on here I don't know if you guys can hear it But part of learning to use notch frequencies Is learning to train your ear a little bit What you're going to hear and so in this vocal, she's a great singer, but we were in this room when we were recording. There was not a whole lot to block sound, and you get weird resonances when you're in unideal scenarios. So your microphone could be picking up resonances from the room, resonances from anything else that's happening. Someone could be down in the kitchen hitting something, and it could reverberate through the walls, and the mic could pick that up. Um... Or sometimes just the microphone and the singer don't go all that well together, but that's the only microphone you've got on site, so that's what has to happen. Now, I'm sure you bedroom producers can understand that. And so in this scenario, using notch frequencies, we can get rid of some of what was going on. And I'll show you what we did here. Like a moth to a flag, they draw me in. Those empty words and those cheap lines. So you hear, of course... That's going to sound terrible because I've got 16.5 dB boosted on that one frequency. So you could do that a lot of places. So let's move this around. Like a moth to a flag, they draw me in. Those empty words and those cheap lines. And before I knew it, my heart is gone again. But you'll hear, you don't get as many everywhere. And that's because I was hearing this weird nasally ringing honking kind of thing happening. Uh, so we went and found it by boosting and sweeping. You've heard this advice a million times, but what you may not hear a lot of is that to find these frequencies that you really actually want to get rid of that aren't just part of the sound, you need to be a little bit more discerning. And by that, I mean, we could boost anything 20 dB and it's going to sound bad and sound ringing and not necessarily be good for your track. But in the case of trying to get rid of that that little honky frequency that's coming through and making it, it's just bothering my ears, then to get rid of that, we want to find something that's present almost all the time and not just sometimes on certain notes because sometimes on certain notes, it's just part of the note. And maybe the room may exacerbate that slightly, in which case you could pull out just a couple of dB and even it out. And it's not, not a huge surgical move you're making. But in this case, when it's present on all the notes, we want to get kind of rid of it because that's something that the mic's picking up from, from her and the room and everything else that's going on or the way objects are placed that it's bouncing around and getting back to the mic and creating a buildup at this frequency. So let's listen again with it on and off. Like a moth to a flag, they draw me in. Those empty words and those cheap lines. It's present on almost every word in the line. So we're going to pull enough out to get rid of it. Like a moth to a flag. They draw me in those empty words and those cheap lines. And that feels way better. Same thing's kind of going on over here. Um, same thing. There was some ringing 
and some screeching kind of happening, which wasn't really part of her voice because she <laughs> doesn't sing like that. She sounds great. So we move around till we find this that's present in a bunch of words across these lines. Like a moth to a flame, they draw me in. Those empty words and those cheap lines. And we do that by making a giant a, a giant move on the Q of the EQ frequency. So I could come out here with a really wide Q. That's not going to do anything for us. We want to get that, that thing tight so that we find exactly what it is we're looking for and pull that out. Like a moth to a flame, they draw me in. And that ringing is just unpleasant, so we're going to get rid of that. But again, it took time to move and find something that was present a lot. Like a moth to a flame, they draw me in. And it's just because I've trained my ears enough to where I can kind of hear where these things are. And so I recommend that you go through and do this on several tracks of different types. We're going to look at several different of them today. But we're going to move around a little bit here and see that this isn't on every frequency. Like a moth to a flame, they draw me in. Those empty words and those cheap lights. And before I knew it, my heart is gone again All because of those brown eyes like There's some way up there that we probably could have gotten rid of But there wasn't much of a need to We get rid of it elsewhere I like to do this in stacked chains Sometimes I'll do two or three nodes on one Do a little compression Which is what's happening over here You can see here's some more notches taken out of this one That was bothering me At, lo and behold, up at 3k And then we do a couple of rounds of compression A couple of rounds of dynamic eq and dsing like i do in some of my other videos before we finish up on the vocal but in this case this is something you guys really need to learn how to do because in your bedrooms this is going to be an issue i'm going to turn the vocal off we're going to head over here to the guitar and see that you can do it on the guitar as well pull up my guitar eq and good old high pass a little bit of a low pass just because of the same idea there was a lot of shimmering coming through in the room recording and sometimes this is what you have to do when you're recording on site and in someone's home and this is what they've got or this is what you were able to bring any kind of scenario could come up for anybody at the home studio who's doing this so i want to be sure that we talk about things like this to help you guys make better songs See, present throughout, not like some notes that are only parts of some chords or some other aspect of the guitar or the way it's being played. It is a frequency that's been caused by reverberations through the room, getting to the mic, or the way the mic is responding to the instrument or the instrument itself, and we need to be able to get rid of that to make better tracks. Let's try this one. In that case, it wasn't on every chord on the chord change, but it was in enough of the track, since we play these chords over and over and over again, that I thought it would be best to get rid of it because it wasn't affecting the sound of the other chords. So let's see kind of how we decide how much we want to pull out. See there. Now we didn't take out a ton. 6 dB is what we needed to do, but it disappeared. The ringing disappeared on those chords, but the other, the second chord where the ringing was not, did not seem to be affected. One more over here. Pretty cool. So that is one way to use notch frequencies, which is where we make a really small Q on our EQ node and find a frequency that's there all the time and pull that guy out so we don't have shrieking, ringing, and persistent bad sounds in our tracks. This is a lot more surgical than wide EQ bands, but is really necessary, especially in these like small studio scenarios where certain mics, certain people, certain rooms may cause more resonant frequencies and buildups like that than not. We'll be looking at some other examples next week uh, for some more orchestral type instruments. 
and working on getting some of these notch frequencies out of reverbs and some of the other things that we need to do to help clean up our tracks for better sounding home recordings. If you like this, if you found this useful, comment, subscribe, all the regular YouTube stuff that every single person always tells you to do, uh, the bell, whatever, be looking for more videos. I'm glad to be back doing this again. And if you want some saturation tips, I've got a free ebook at treymixes.com. If you want to hire me for a mix, if you want to hire me for a master, if you want some production advice, mix critiques, anything, if you like what you hear, head on, send me an email, and I'll get back to you. Thank you very much.